Are you there? Ryan, are you there? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Where is he? I can't see him. <laughs> Talk to us. Hello. Ah, there he is. All right. So can you just tell everyone like who you are, what you do, and how they can follow you and see your work and all that good stuff? It all plays backwards on here, doesn't it? Um, um, I'm Riker, uh, Ryan Callanan. I make things and sell some stuff through you and then sell, mainly just sell. I'm like a selling machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your figure sold out. Which one, Headman? No, we still have a few Headman, um, but the protest figure sold out. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's Did good. You, you don't seem yeah. very excited. Ah, uh, just because it came with baggage, but it's good, I guess. It, yeah, it came came with baggage. How? Ah, uh, just the build up to it with people saying that I've stolen the idea. Mm. Excuse me, not people. There were two people, and the artist who had done the same concept before even did not have a problem with what you did. No, I spoke to him about the two weeks before that because uh, it all happened when I put a preview up on my own page. So, mm -hmm. anyway, it's water under the bridge. Um, of, of course, I think, but I mean, I but he, he was not upset, correct? Not in the, I think not after a, uh, an explanation and. Uh, Okay, well, look, artists' feathers are just, generally it's, ruffled it's, very easily, like, you know, fragile egos everywhere. So, you know, and then once I explained it, like, I totally settled down the guy who, you know, was the one that was complaining, saying, hey, didn't this guy do this before? It's like, it's a historical event. Like, well, what's funny is a lot of those guys who chirped up and chipped in with um, some stuff. Uh, you know n nothing positive just sort of trying to call me out and i was like how can you all follow me and never i've never seen your names before and you right. never like any of my posts you're just lurking there waiting for me to slip up is that is that how this is go fuck yep. yourself that's how the internet works man i mean that's like they just you know they come out when it's time to talk some shit oh have you got a new t-shirt I, I are you making fun of me no i'm just saying it looks different tone of gray you got Fifty Shades of Grey t-shirt. <laughs> no, they're all exactly the same. Uh, that's an Einstein thing, isn't it? That one. Um, I mean, yeah, I would love that to be. I think there's a lot of element. There's a lot of elements to it. First of all, it's I'm not, not that true. Brilliant. I'm not that brilliant. Um, I used to wear different color shirts, uh, and it. It just became like every day, like this internal, you know, struggle. Like, what shirt should I wear today? Like, that's how an Einstein this, thing. Then, does it fit my mood? Like, am I good? You know, and it's like, does this communicate? Like, does this is this shirt cool? And then there's like shirt politics. Like, you know, you go to a concert and like you can't wear the shirt of the people you're going to see because that's like fanboyish. You have to wear the other kind of like sort of cool like people thing that people are not don't know about because that's like, i don't know it's just um and so uh i have a septic tank at the house so we can't use bleach okay <laughs> so weird segue. all right so i'm just telling, giving you reasons so white shirts are out right because white shirts in order to keep them nice and fresh and like super crispy bright you've got to have bleach and if you know about a septic tank, if you use bleach, you kill the bacteria that are like eating your poop and then you start to have problems. So your white shirts get kind of like dingy and gross and eventually you look kind of homeless, right? Are you so, saying that your, um, your septic tank could be the first um, birthplace of COVID-19? <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> that is something that you said and has no credibility whatsoever. All right, and then on the other end of the spectrum is um, I, I, I have like eczema and you know uh, egg or psoriasis, and it's uh, you can see it here and here, little spots. It's not terrible generally in the past, uh, you know, few years, but oh, gosh, um, 
it, it's just so I have flaky skin, right? And right. so if I it, so if I wear a black shirt, uh, it's just it's really unappealing. So it gray, looks like you've um, it looks like you've been to the cinema, tripped yeah. up, and spilt the popcorn. Yeah, it's just it's just it's a terrible look, and mm. uh, so gray is like the easiest. And I have a you know a wholesale account with American Apparel, so you know. <laughs> It's just, it works on all balls, of Balls, so, your balls. <laughs> yeah. So instead of $16 a shirt um, in their stores, I think like the wholesale, when you buy 24 of them, they're like four bucks. How do I end this? Because it's boring. <laughs> <sighs> so, you know, you asked me what the format was and apparently the format is just. Yeah, but I didn't ask you about your fucking septic tank. and <laughs> <laughs> He's just making fun of Dove. You asked oh. me about the gray shirt. So I, anyway, th those are the reasons that I tell myself. You why should call yourself DKE Tangents. <laughs> yeah. But what else do we have to talk about? I asked <laughs> you to talk about your work. You just said you just make stuff. And just gave me the boring uh, I, 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 kept, I kept it brief and comedic. Uh -huh. You're welcome. <laughs> Dove comes in <laughs> only one available colorway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, I can tell you the real reason that I uh, wear gray shirts. All the reasons that I just told you are the reasons that I told myself. But anyway, let's talk about you. You don't want to talk about gray shirts. What is that? that you're, is not, you're, you're now making bling? Yeah. Is it gold? Yeah. 24, 24 karat? Is it plated or is it solid? No, it's solid. Um, solid alloy with plate. If solid. I was making, yeah, if I was making this in solid gold, that'd be like uh, mean, five five thousand dollars in gold. How many yeah. ounces is that? I'd be like an Egyptian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, King nor Tut. do I want to know. <laughs> what do you mean? You never studied Egyptology? <laughs> the world didn't start in fourteen ninety two, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We've got geez. kings and queens older than your <laughs> wretched island. Um, <laughs> oh. Mayflower, that's the name of a pub. <laughs> oh, jeez. You guys over in the UK, you'll just never get over. Like, you know, like Americans don't think about that stuff at all. What, history? Because, no. <laughs> about. about the, like, consequences of voting <laughs> no oh, you clearly don't think about that um what are we no, I, anymore no i guess what i'm saying is that on a daily basis your average american does not think about how the united states was once a british colony how many times a day do you think of that Where's Ford? <laughs> <laughs> you recognize this <laughs> look at that very cool do you More recognize it? Do you no, recognize what is it? it? What is it? So apparently this is the first, it's, it's in a, a vintage pendant that has been recast into fine jewelry. Oh, and that's, a, that's a factor's pendant from the 70s. Yeah, it's like the original, it's the first thing that got a license but it, approval but or something. But it's bigger. A factor's pendant is much smaller. It's like a half an no, inch. No, far away. Close, far away. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective, dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't think this was going to be an episode of Monty Python. Can we come back every day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So uh, my point that I was trying to make, which you clearly don't care about, is that uh, Americans just never really think, or actually, most people probably don't even know that this was once a British colony. But the interesting thing is that how'd you get every, the language then? Every time, <laughs> I, I, we're not saying that, I, no one's not giving credit where credit is due. I'm just saying that the average American just does not think in those terms. Okay. And, and, and the funny thing is I've never had a conversation with you where, you know, you don't find a way to point it out. Oh. <laughs> So there you have it. Anyway, so what else is going on? How's things going over there? It's all right. It's, um, British life okay? 
Are you guys shut down still? Or are you kind of opening no, up? We're, what's, what's... Uh, we're easing the op- e- uh, the lockdown. E- easing. Yeah. Yeah. We and, uh, we did easing, and then everyone. Uh, hopefully, you guys are easing a little easier, because here well, everyone was just kind of in a rush. It's kind of rushed. We were slow to lock, and it feels a bit premature to open up. But um, it's it's given me it's given me some time at home and to mm-hmm. make stuff and. Uh, it feels like that Wayne's World moment, you know, when the DJ's not listening to them. Mm. Like, I can say anything I want right now. <laughs> like, you're a complete <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you're just going to agree. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's been good. I work, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, actually tr- I'm actually trying to get people to tune in to watch you. So, oh, God, you, good luck. You can, you can suck it. <laughs> I watched a bit of uh, Morgan earlier. That was... Uh, and how was that? Did you enjoy that? It's all right, you I just, didn't understand. You, you decided that you just wanted to be funnier and more irreverent and more insulting to Americans. That's okay. I wasn't insulting to Americans. <laughs> if, you're, if, if an American cannot handle the satire, that's on them, not me. Yes, indeed. This is um, the Ricky Gervais school of comedy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, set, he, he sets a high bar. Indeed. Um, yeah, so what am I doing? Making more things, trying not to step on other people's toes. <laughs> uh, Are you going to do more protest figures? Yeah, I've got about four lined up. What's the next one? The next one? You better say, tell everyone what it is now so we can say we heard it. Uh, it's first. LGBTQ gay rights. Um, sort of it, it, it's it's going to be ambiguous um you know nice so like it, what's, you know, what's after that well it could change because of um what's going on but i wanted to do um no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go that far ahead that's like two years no. maybe. what what about uh the vietnam protest uh the the buddhist monk that set himself on fire <sighs> yeah so it's just really difficult to fucking cast, so no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Maybe then Barbarian Rage could help me on that one. <laughs> I, I need to find a way of executing it with minimal effort. We've got um, some comments here. Show up for bootleg toy talk, stay for septic tank talk. Mm-hmm. Somehow Dove is about to insult God, Rika, and the Queen. <laughs> Thank you. You can, ins- <laughs> you can insult all three, and I'd pay you. <laughs> Um, oh, someone wants to know what's the next art trooper? How c- can I not see this text, or is there a way of I? Hey, I I just want to give a shout out here. I don't know if he's watching uh, to Eric Young. Eric Young stops by the San Diego Comic Con booth every year and drops off a box of chocolate macadamia nuts. Yes, he does. And we sit there and we eat them because we're all tired and like, uh, and someone gives us sugar and it's just amazing. And what arrived in the mail today is he actually mailed us a box from Hawaii for our San Diego event. Unbelievable. That's nice. So, so cool. I'm going to munch on one while I'm talking. You can hear me chew. Even better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is, who's there? Who's laughing in the background? It's like an echo. It's not you because you're not laughing. Oh, Ian. Oh, Ian. Hello, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Treagle. How's it going? <laughs> I demand oh, the finest food links in humanity. I want um, them here. And I want them now. Um, <laughs> Let's see. I can turn this around so you can see. You see that? Fuck? So, so Ian is right there, manning the computer taking care of all the stuff there. And then Chris, Janky Toys right there, is kind of being controlling all of the... Internet. Yeah. <laughs> I will not do a fake Rick Jackson. Oh, this is in your, um, this is in your warehouse. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? This is in my house? I don't know. I thought you might have been the only person to go to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, just so stubborn. Like you're like, no, fuck this. I'm setting up. 
Right, I'm in the convention center all alone. <laughs> Hello! That's why I was like, why is there an echo? Why is there someone laughing? It's just like the, the janitor is just laughing at you because you're the only one who can <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Scott Cherry anyway. says, cast in transparent red and yellow for flames, then paint the monk. Mm. No. <laughs> Riker says no. I, I just... um. Yeah, I don't know about him because um, I guess the other ones as well so far are not, um, you know, we don't know that they died. I like to think that they went on and um, lived happily ever after and spawned other protesters. Right, they're not. Where, whereas they're like not, the monk. The, right, the suffragette, I'm a man. Right, they're not. I dead. mean, there are specific people, but. No, they're, they're not though. I, I, I choose that they're, they're, they're specific people of a time and a movement, but they're not a, um, a celebrity of a movement. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. That's why yeah. like, there's so many that are, like, would work, but um, they wouldn't work because I don't want to make a figure of like, um, yeah, yeah, just like Malcolm X or, you know, someone that has right, already... Right. Yeah. So the personality is not bigger than what, what you're talking about. No, because the, protest, the protests are about the protests and not the human, but it's weird because the human issue, it, it, they're supposed to represent a black, a blank canvas that you can project or um, empathize with. That's it, I guess. Right. Um, so for people who don't know you, I mean, you do a lot of stuff over there, right? You have a shop and can you just tell people about all of the stuff that you do? Because it's kind of amazing. I mean, I see a lot of stuff in the background right there. Where are oh, that you? Was, are you, um, are you in the workshop or are you home? I'm I'm at my home workshop, which Here's is your home mess. workshop. Um, yeah, but you also have another place where you are silk screening and making signs and just fabricating all sorts of stuff for other people. Can you talk about that? Because I I think a lot of the people here who are in the chat would find that fascinating. Um, yeah, so I got a I got a home workshop with um, a laser cutter. Um, spray booth, uh, sculpting, molding. I could do little bits and pieces here and that's been a, a savior of the last three months um, because I've been stuck at home a lot. Um, and then I've got an industrial workshop, warehouse, studio with um, some big heavy machinery. My CNC machine can't really be plugged into the domestic power so it needs to stay there. Um, I've got a big spray booth there, more casting, a uh, silk screen table, loads of storage. Uh, yeah, and I just do my uh, fine art. I execute a lot of my fine art there. But you also uh, do a lot of fabricating for other people, correct? Not so much anymore, but yes. Not I anymore, used to. but you, you no. used to do prints and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I published a lot of prints in street art. Um, so really I, not so so most of your output is your own work now? Um, of the last couple of years, yeah, I still, I still do bits and pieces. The last print I made, um, I sort of produced it, but it was for um, Trap Toys, and it was based on their Easy He, and we did a... I, I, I sort of convinced them to do a print because I make prints, and that's how I started in art. And, uh, yeah, they, let, they, give me the, they give me the chance to make the print, and... Um, they sold it out like they sell out most stuff and um yeah it was pretty cool because it was just some card art from a bootleg toy turned into nice. a fine art print Very and it cool. worked it worked um because it, it was it was already a vector graphic right like it was already kind of it like was already it was already refined as a yeah an illustration so it, okay. there wasn't much work but i i did a, a g clay print with um gloss layers and gold leaf like 23 karat gold Details. Oh, wow. so you didn't even shrink. Uh, you didn't even silk screen. Good, that's cool. Uh, no, it wasn't that... all. It wasn't all silk screen. It was mixed media, so um, nice. it didn't. Yeah. Otherwise, you're talking about hundred layers on that image. Right. Uh, we got someone who's asking what the next art trooper is. Uh, continuously changes. Um, there's there's a couple of like. Well, the the next one's probably gonna be. Um, can't really say, but it's uh, for New York Comic Con, and then uh, have you started on that one? No, not yet. Um, and I, I then, better, 
I better call and confirm that one before you move forward. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's not. I'm. I'm not in a mad rush to be honest. Um, to do the next one, I want to do. Um, I want to do Salvador Dali because um, then it's like two Spanish guys on the bounce, and then I'm going to look at British artists. Um, but I don't. Other than um, Suck Lord, I don't. I don't want to do any contemporary artists. So it gets it gets a bit difficult, and I mean there is there's plenty more artists I want to do, but right. um, I like to keep it um, sort of nationalised for at least one or two in the series because it, mm. it started off with three Ameri- three of my favourite Americans. So that's that's the kind of plan. What are your favourite British artists? Um, like, what direction would you go into? Like, if it if you know if actually making them and selling them wasn't a factor, like. If those are your three favorite American artists, do you have favorite British would, artists? Yeah, I would say like um, within like street art, you've got um, a friend like a friend of mine, uh, Ben Ein. I really like him, and uh, he hates toys. So that would be really funny to um, do. That. <laughs> uh, have you had a conversation with him about it? Like he, he no, hates toys for the, the only the the only conversation I ever had with him, and he just said, "I fucking hate toys. Like, just doesn't get it. Doesn't." not not interested mm-hmm. uh which which for me makes it a bit more interesting um oh. i guess uh like Bank, banksy seems like the lowest hanging fruit of the month oh man if you did a banksy like we could sell like hundreds of those i know but that's kind of like why i don't want to do it i want to i want to make um mm-hmm. peg warmers essentially you Stuff want to make peg warmers? yeah uh, well there's that's that's why I'm like you. You tell me that something sold out. That was kind of like oh, but that means it's fucking low hanging fruit. Whereas the suffragette took way longer to sell yeah, out. Well, because, well, because we didn't out. release. We didn't release the suffragette. That's don't don't like uh, underestimate the the power of DKE here. Like uh, we released the I'm a man and we sold it like that. Yeah, but that was a, that was a that was because it was an American. I know there were suffragettes in the states, but um, absolutely. The, yeah, but the the it was um it was the centenary um in the UK, or there was there was some anniversary I can't remember I'm 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 actually I've forgotten but there was a reason why I did it here and of that time, um, and yeah that was uh it was no it wasn't a cent was it a centenary I think it was there was some anniversary and that was why I did the suffragette and it was based on the victor it was based on the period of the British protest because um. Uh, that's where that's the suffragette movement I learned about, and not the American one, which I think was later. It might have even been earlier. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know I, about that. Doesn't matter. Um, but I guess there's it. reasons. There's reasons like LGBT, reason. the LGBTQ like gay pride um, mm-hmm. protester. That's a worldwide one, so you might get a little sniff at that. Sounds <laughs> good. Uh, Denman says I would love a Jack Kirby for SDCC next year. Jack Kirby, yeah, I'm not, not a massive comic book fan. I, do, I know the name, but um, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't go down that rabbit hole. Got it. No rabbit holes for you. Not comic books. Never, never got into comics. I understand. Wasn't a thing. Wasn't a thing for me. Yeah. British comics, they were kind of weak. Apart from Judge Dredd, which is the best comic <laughs> ever made. So. Uh, I did recently watch that, uh, that, the 2000 AD documentary. Did you see that? On what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I bought it at uh, budplant.com. Uh, it's, I can look it up. Uh, 2000 AD and Jud- the handling of Judge Dredd for me, like from it, comic to films, is just such a wasted thing. But it's they just talk about the whole history. They talk about like the whole you know 30 or I think 40 years now of the how 2000 AD started, how it went from publisher to publisher. They interviewed all the artists. Um, they were all there and just talking about like the culture and how it moved, how the first movie and into the second movie and what Judge Dredd means to the culture. It was a great documentary. I mean, I just need to, uh, yeah, it, I need to see that because um, it, it, and what's, it, what's fascinating about it is that it's, there's, you know, the worst kind of doc- documentaries are just like talking heads. It's just cut to this guy and this guy talks and cut to this guy and this guy talks and not a lot of visuals. Um, yeah. But this is just people talking and I was just sitting there just, I mean, it was just an amazing, uh, and uh, to the point where, you know, all the British guys end up leaving 
and coming to the United States and how that whole kind of like brain drain uh, and what was left behind and, uh, you know, what's his name, Grant Morrison and Neil Gaiman and uh, all those, uh, who's the guy who illustrated uh, Watchmen, Dave Gibbons, like all those guys, they kind of just left 2000 AD and there's this mismanagement and, you know, not treating them well and, you know, to just the whole, and, you know, and in the end, you know, it's not ruining anything, but, you know, it's still going strong and it's still this place for, you know, this really like crazy subversive comic book. And, uh, and you know, they, t they talk a lot about how it. Uh, it oh, can you just tell me the name so I can tell everyone? It's called Future Shock. Future Shock, okay. Ian, if you check your chat, Ian sent you a link to it. So everyone, if if you're on Amazon, it's a documentary called Future Shock. It's all about 2000 AD, and really like puts it into perspective of, you know, British comics and it, this probably being like the most important British comic, uh, and then yeah. how how it influenced. Like there would be no Vertigo comics with DC if not for 2000 AD. Like that was, you know, the genesis of you know Sandman and all of that non-superhero kind of genre like all of those british artists all came you know to work for dc and marvel and just and that you know that was that was a game changer for me as a kid like i, I knew what judge dread was but i got out of superhero comics really fast you know that lasted um once i found like sandman and those other comics in the 80s where people could tell stories um that were just not the same. It's like Hulk mad, Hulk smash, you know, boom, new, you know, new bad guy, same story, you know, and just keep turning that whole thing around. Like I got over that like really fast. And those Vertigo books that uh, that DC put out um, really uh, upped the game and changed the entire comic book industry. So there you have it. Sweet. I'm going to have to look into it. Yeah, you will enjoy. <laughs> It'll just confirm what you already know. I don't know shit about comics. I'm just being British and patriotic. Um, Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and shitting uh, on America again. Oh, uh, oh, geez. I don't feel like I feel like um, I feel like the big uh, pigeon flying over the states and just going. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Anyone out there have any questions for Raiko while you have access to him? Are you, are you doing there. something? What are you doing right now? Drawing. Oh. Drawing. Yeah. I see. I, 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 I can't sit still. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't sit Seth still. Re Seth Relentless says, what's up? That's not really a question. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah. So, so, what I, else? I, I, what, what, so, what the, next, the next... The next thing is 12 inch figures, 12 inch bootlegs with flat backs. Nice. So with, um, you know, I'm, I'm revisiting some of my, um, I wouldn't say greatest hits cause some of them are not sold out, but for me, they're greatest hits. Like, like I was saying, like the ones that sell out and I, I have less. What is not sold out? Everything's sold out. Uh, I don't, I don't even think I made all the GI foes, uh, in oh, a small well, size. If you would make them and send them to me, they would sell. Yeah, but then 12 inch GI foe with real chains is going to be a thing. Nice. And then, uh, and then we have, um, I've, I'm looking at all the wrappers. There's Easy E, 12 inch mm -hmm. Easy. We want Easy. Um, I'm always then, worried. I'm always worried about the wrappers. You know, they're dead. They're um, not coming to get you. No, I'm worried about the estate of the wrappers because, you know, yeah. well, I, you know, I'm worried about the transformative properties of those and whether, um, because you're calling them by name, right? Uh, no, I usually use one of their AKAs, not one of their recording titles. So, got it. I think I think going forward, that's what I'll do. But I'm not doing massive runs. Um, and I've I've seen that like there's Super Seven rapper figures now, like four or five years after I did mine. Right. And uh, but, so that's but, uh, that's that's when it gets tricky because what happens is when these companies sign. Yeah sign a, a contract and so let's say the easy e estate might not care 
but then once someone is paying them to to produce uh, licensed figures, it generally says in a licensing contract that um, that the licensor has to defend the licensee against other people yeah. who are competing with them, you know, illegally. So, I don't know. But but then it's like, uh, are we losing the point of what a bootleg is at the same time? And uh, yes. Maybe. And I and I, I don't really care much for like Super Seven. I mean, I know that um, I really like the Phantom Star Killer because it's gone a full circle and become mm -hmm. a real production piece. And uh, I just, I just think that's that's like an amazing achievement for sure. Ev everyone doing this to to look at and uh, aspire to. I think I think the the goal is to get a legit thing made. And like, and and I, I heard earlier there's a comic and hopefully it'll become. Imagine if there was a film or an animation from that; it'd be fucking nuts. But absolutely. Um, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I I ordered uh, a couple hundred copies of the Ashcan, which is technically the first appearance of Phantom Star Killer. Uh, we're we're gonna have them for sale on our site eventually, but there, um, I think there's only two thousand copies made. So that's gonna technically be the first appearance of Phantom Star Killer in a comic book. And if anyone knows about comic book values, you know that the first appearance of anyone is uh is the one that everyone wants and the one that's like having like the rookie card or you know the it, it's the one um uh, someone's asking here seth says tell us about your vacuum for sculptures do you mean vacuum form machine blisters because you make all your own blisters correct i mean we send you some of our blisters but you make stuff all the time yeah i like i like to make the um because i've got the cnc machine i like to make um custom blisters and i'm fascinated with all kinds of packaging from soaps sandwiches uh you know chocolate trays all of that stuff i've always been into um the housing of products um even iphones like the the cradle that they come in and um, there's just so much thought and effort got into that and uh for me like the technical achievement of making a like cool blisters I think it's like, for me, it's like one of the main things. Like, I don't think the the idea and the toy are necessarily always like massively important. I think some like sometimes the blister is equally important to complement or just to show like an extra care and attention has been paid to something. Like, um, I think my favourite is the um, prize pet blister because that was uh, quite an achievement. So for people who are watching and don't know, this is the prize pet here. Yeah. And yeah. it's almost sold out. How many, this was a larger edition. If you'd made less, they would have been sold out immediately, but uh, you made 65 and I think there's like seven or eight left. Can you check yeah. that? Yeah. But there's, um, there's that thing of, um, they move. Yeah, uh, sometimes, sometimes the, you know, the adhesive on the back moves and so it moves down and then I can That's quite funny. I can fix it by doing this and then I give it a good <laughs> push Smash! And, then, and then boom. Oh, snap. As good as new. But uh, so there's six of these left. Uh, All right. if you if you can see the shape of this, I, I remember you designing this because so tell people just so they understand it what a CNC machine does and why a CNC machine where you cut wood and and other things has anything to do with making a blister um so all blisters are are a, a forming over um, a solid tool and the the space uh the space that is left in in the blister you know like i was saying before i think it's just as important as sometimes the toy or the idea and um that that whole idea was after watching uh, The Force Awakens and being really pissed off with um, <laughs> Sorry. The, ad the, the No, no, just like being just really furious with the handling of Admiral Akbar. No, um, the lot was it The Last Jedi? Yeah. I can't even remember. They're just a blur. But anyway, yeah. they just blew him out of a fucking window. And I was just like, I'm not having it, man. He's a decorated war general. He won the Battle of uh, Endor. And now you just blew him out the window and replaced him with someone with purple rinse hair. And we're supposed to like warm to, but I, I, everyone likes Laura Dern, the actress, but 
Like, don't shoehorn in some unnecessary piece of shit. Like, man, just give us some more Akbar. And <laughs> and, and and it was a real. I, I just feel it's a real mixed message because in um, Solo uh, Rogue One, you've got Radus, like another Mon Calamari general who kicks ass. We already had Akbar. We kind of like it. We get it. We like these goldfish-looking dudes. Like, uh, why the? F why would you handle him like that, man? And and that was uh, yeah, just toss him away. Don't give a shit. Like you just want him at the fairground in a bag, and oh, if he dies on the way home, fuck it. We just wash him down the toilet. <laughs> Didn't even name him. Like he's, you know, don't give. It, we don't care. It's not like a puppy. <laughs> Admiral, Ad, Ad, what I'm saying is Admiral Akbar is <laughs> he's like your family dog. He's not your fucking goldfish. <laughs> I don't know oh. if it's just me, but that's that's how I felt about it. <laughs> Right, Chinky. <laughs> Chinky seems to agree. Uh, I don't want to get into talking about those new movies. Politics. Um, they just, uh, they don't exist for me. Like, I, I mean, I'm in a good place with Star Wars. I think I've told you this privately, but just so everyone knows, like, um, if you say you're a Batman fan, you know, there's 75 years of Batman material out there comic books, video games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, breakfast cereals, you name it, books, comic books, uh, whatever. Um, if I say I'm a Batman fan, it doesn't mean I like everything, right? It's just conceptually I like the idea and there's something I like, right? And for a long time being a Star Wars fan, when people said, are you a Star Wars fan? It meant that like you just loved everything. Well, obviously, how can you be a Star Wars fan and hate, yeah. hate Jar Jar Binks? Well, the thing is, like, I'm a Star Wars fan. I can say it now after, you know, I spent 20 years, like, in denial. But now, 2020, I can say I'm a Star Wars fan. And like all of these other properties, most of the material that's out there is garbage. But there are a few things about it that I like and enjoy and, you know, share with my children and want to you know, keep around and enjoy. And the stuff that's garbage, I just kind of ignore. Like, I don't, I don't sit around complaining about how terrible this one Batman comic that I read because it's so unrealistic that Bruce Wayne would do this. And went, blah, 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 why did the Joker da, 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 da. And Star Wars fans are just going on and on about like, yeah, there's just, a, once, once you open it up and you let other creators start making material, um, that's where it goes like you know it's no, just... I, I, I have to disagree because I think like there's been instances and examples um, with Disney and their handling and their uh, productions that they if they give it to the right people they can make it right that's fine but there will continue to be things that are right and there will continue to be garbage whether oh, you yeah, like that's... it or, whether you like it or not so to that's spend a, just... any more time complaining about the garbage just makes no sense like it just who cares it I, doesn't I, I just it doesn't matter and i'm just i you know i can complain about star wars like the best of them i can tell you about how everything just you know even like i mean while i enjoyed watching the mandalorian it's like every time they had this kind of like little like easter egg and showing it's like Okay, you had to land on this planet. You had to go to the cantina. You had to sit in the seat where Han Solo was. You're like, everything was like a little, like, you know, for the fans, for the fans, you know, the little reference. And just takes me out of it every time. And Really? I, yeah. Well, you'd rather like, go to Canto by it. I don't want it to be lame, but... And see you know, space the, horses. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Evie Knight. Pulling pine. <laughs> <laughs> it just look the story. I want to see. Place... I, I want to see. I want to see a carbonizing unit in the back of a spaceship. I don't want to fucking see, um, like a little leprechaun losing his chips in a casino. <laughs> no about. Well, and I, I, yeah, I'm like Snoke. You know, everyone's Snoke theory sucks now because Snoke sucks, and the whole handling of Snoke sucks because. This is what happened. It's like it's like watching a relay at the Olympics, and the the uh, the relay team have just been put together twenty seconds before they fucking hear the gunshot, and Again, no one knows what they're doing. We, you've got a swimmer again, running. You've got 
you've got a, a javelin. You've got a javelin thrower trying to run hurdles. <laughs> Just give it to John Favreau. <laughs> he he clearly understands how we feel. Um, for some people, I just I, I guess what I'm saying is that it's gonna be what it's gonna be, whether you complain about it or not. You have yep. very little sway in it, and there's gonna mm -hmm. be some things that some creators are gonna get, and there's gonna be some stuff that is just utter bullshit. And that's <laughs> oh, damn it. Should we make toys about it then? Yeah, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> what 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 is the essence of a bootleg then should is the narrative like i mean i'm trying to shift the narrative of what a bootleg can be by um putting my personal frustrations into um an artistic representation look, because i yeah, think but, it's funny look i'm i don't tell people that i sell bootlegs we call it that colloquially colloquially i can't even say that word um you know the suckler started by using that word and these pieces actually very often have, um, you know, a reminiscent of bootlegs, but they're not bootlegs. We sell art. Um, this is art, and uh, it does cross over, but I don't know. I whatever, you know. So I don't know. So should know we make that. a? Should, we we can make art about anything. So then the answer to my own question is, just keep doing that. Yeah, I mean, you're an artist, right? So you make art. If, so. if your yeah. medium happens to be something that looks like a toy, I mean, what if it looked like a car? What if it looked like a beach ball? Like, it doesn't matter, like, what it is, right? Nah, it could be anything. And uh, I think I think the some of the best art is um, personal. And then there there is like an an answer to be found if it's not clearly hitting you over the head. Or uh, that, I think some of the best bootlegs in the world are, or some of the best art toys, sorry, but I keep saying bootlegs, but some of the best art toys out there and what I see on your booth are the mm -hmm. ones that they just give you an immediate answer. You don't need to sort of look too deep into it. And some of the, some, I like some figures that you have mm -hmm. and I don't understand the reference. Um, I think that's Seth, uh, is it Seth Relentless? He, he's making a really cool line of stuff and I don't sure. get it because it's just it's like some of it's really niche american advertising and when he explained it to me and showed me some of this stuff on youtube i was like oh it's just, that's crazy it makes it even better that uh, right I well i mean you can just thing. look at the execution you can look at the sculpting and the, the mm. painting that he does and uh i mean that's just amazing what on on its own but then you know when you see the child detention officer <laughs> and there's like there's kids in jail mm -hmm. in the background and it's like you know uh yeah he's kind of like the artist favorite of all the other artists collect his work he's like the artist's artist in a way the bootlegs bootleg there's bootleg, bootleg yeah bootleg, my, bootleg, uh, i don't know i think my my, my whole thing is um i always make half toys like flat backs um, and yeah. it's just been my thing from the start i'm like it's kind of your signature yeah, I don't. I it's it, like some people might think that's a cop out, but I've got no interest in making um, four inch figures articulate and look good out of the box because my whole thing is like if you open them up, you fucked it, and that's the narrative <laughs> of that's 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 vintage collecting, man. Like, don't yeah. you know? Look, I just got I just scored this over the lockdown from Germany. Nice. Try low, try logo, man, -a man. Like the blister is beat up, but. You don't get many of these anymore because everyone in the States and Asia have mopped these up, the European yeah. ones. And, uh, <laughs> Did you hear no Ian? No. Ian said, and also no one wants a Man of Man. <laughs> Man of Man's the best toy ever made. I know. We all know it's your favorite. It's all the right, best dude. toy ever made. <laughs> well, I got to, unfortunately, let you go. Um, I got someone else's interview starting in a few minutes. That feels like um, I'm being dumped. Can I dump you instead? <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> oh, I'm leaving this interview. <laughs> Fuck you. Flip the table. <laughs> All right, How dude, dare you? So this, is, this is just a power trip for you, isn't it? You just get to cut everyone off. It's not. And I'm not cutting you off by any means. Just politely saying goodbye. <laughs> and that it, right. has been a, it has been a pleasure. And I appreciate you Ho taking the time hopefully. so late at night. Hopefully I can get out to the States, um, I don't know, next year. 
The way yeah. it's going, I don't know, man. What's going on? I'm sure that you'll be able to come out for Decon 2021. 2021, sure. yeah. Not, no, I don't 2021. think I'm going yeah, no. to gonna be coming to the States this year. I don't think we're... I think I'm going to be talking to you again during Decon in this very location with the same booth set up. <laughs> Ian says to send some crisps next time. <laughs> oh yeah, he needs crisps. You should always, Ian. You uh, d just always. You know. You know when you're emailing me about like, oh, you, I'm ready to send my box. You should always just ask Ian as a courtesy. Does he need anything? And I won't. I don't. And I just won't put it in there anyway. <laughs> Oh man! Custard. He wanted custard. I think. Custard. Yeah. You were gonna send it. Uh, well, Ian, Ian, you need to send me a reminder, and I'll send you a box. All right. Can you hear him? I, I heard. All right. You, you, and it cut you, off. You, you geezer. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, and uh, I, I really appreciate. It. Thank you again. Thanks for uh, putting in. Well, it's a lot of work, man. It is, but this is our job, so we do it. And um, I think everyone should deal with Dov. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. And, I, and on that, bomb that show, the, the you, can PayPal, you can PayPal me that money we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. I'll talk to you right. soon. See you later. Right, take Bye. care. Oh, he's going to dump me. Oh, he dumped me. Guy should be a stand-up comedian is what he should be. <laughs>